Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, today I was in a discussion over on Jose J.G. Gonzalez's channel. Shout out Jose. Boom. And Anthony Riley was there with his nonsense on the independent variable. He has a very unique view of science, to say the least. And his discussion of an independent variable is a classic example of it. Now, we attempted to engage Sleeping Warrior, and he responded in his typical manner with name-calling. This, Anthony, is why you will never be a lawyer. You do not have the intellect nor the temperament to conduct a reasonable adult discussion in a court of law. You can't even do it on an internet discussion group. So, let's go over your 10 citations and see what they have to say versus what you think they have to say. So cue up the music and let's go. There's a couple of things that, that really stick out to me um, <clears throat> where the, uh, your, your version of what science is and the, what the recognized version of science is. Um, there is this insistence that the independent variable has to be manipulated by the experimenter. Um, and also that uh, you have to demonstrate a cause and effect. Then neither of these things uh, are actually uh, part of the part of the scientific method. Now, the example that he gave was the question of loaded dice. If you suspect dice are loaded or biased, one way that you can test for them and conduct an experiment is you can roll those dice enough times to have a statistically significant sample. You can record the numbers that come up on the dice, and you can compare them to the st normal statistical distribution expected from dice rolls. If it matches the normal distribution, your dice are, are fine. If it seems to be skewed, as this case is skewed a little bit towards the right, you have good evidence that the dice are loaded or something is wrong with them because they are not behaving as statistically they should. Okay, so Jose, I'm going to present my screen. I'm going to present 10 citations that prove that you're wrong. Oh, good grief. That, now, like Beetlejuice, if you say Anthony Riley's name three times, he has to show up, especially if it has something to do with the independent variable or scientific method. And this was no exception. As you can tell by the groans, we are really tired of listening to Anthony continue to say the same thing again and again after being re corrected repeatedly. Now, I've personally done three or four different videos on, on Anthony Riley and his skewed version of scientific method. I've also done videos on Riley and Oakley and Quantum Eraser showing how they misuse and cherry pick scientific citations. So let's go ahead and proceed. To determine whether or not uh, the dice are working as they should, whether they, yeah. they roll randomly, that's so, it. So that's what, would it. The, what would the independent variable be, John? The independent variable. <laughs> what would you presume oh, yeah. to be? No, that's the that's my whole point. For goodness' sake, there, yeah. there is no there is no attempt in the, in that that single experiment to determine what the cause and effect of any uh, change in the randomness of the of the dice is. Now, as John was attempting to explain why this is a valid scientific experiment. Riley just couldn't help himself. He has to constantly interrupt and talk over and disrupt the conversation. To stay within scientific method, you Anthony, must... Anthony, stop talking over me. No, stop. you're talking shit, and I'm calling you out in front of everybody with 10 citations that prove that you're no. talking shit. It's not okay for you guys to claim science and then refuse to manipulate the independent variable. Now, before we get started on Riley's 10 citations, let's go ahead and kind of get a feel for what the independent and the dependent variable are. The independent variable is what is varied during the experiment. It's what the investigator thinks will affect the dependent variable. There's a key thing here. First of all, there's no requirement for a particular person to manipulate this variable. It just has to change. It has to change independently of any of the other variables in the experiment. And it has to be something that will elicit a change on the dependent variable, which is what we measure. Down here at the bottom, you're gonna see key. Since you need to know what factor is affecting the dependent variable, there must be only one independent variable. 
the investigator must choose, choose the one that he th or she thinks is the most important. Now, manipulate can mean a couple of different things. It can mean I'm manipulating this coffee cup because I'm personally making it move around. I can choose to measure internet speed from several different providers. Am I changing the internet speed on any provider? No, I'm simply choosing several different internet providers and measuring the resulting internet speed that I get with a computer. This is where Riley's misunderstanding comes into play. I don't have to physically change the internet speed. I just have to decide that I want to compare internet service providers against each other. John's claim is that you don't have to manipulate the independent variable. Here is a Penn State University telling you that the independent variable is what is varied during the experiment. It's what the investigator thinks will affect the dependent variable. Now I'll give you on that particular one, it doesn't say that they've got to do it themselves. And Riley, you're absolutely right. That's why I chose your first citation to give the example of what an independent and a dependent variable is. And this citation that you made and offered clearly states that the investigator can choose the independent variable. There's nothing in there about the investigator personally manipulating it. So once again, your citations come around and bite you. University of North Carolina, the independent variable is the presumed cause, in this case, loaded dice, whereas the dependent variable is the presumed effect, in this case, dodgy results. The independent variable is the variable that is controlled and manipulated by the experimenter, John. That makes you wrong. Well, Sleeping Warrior, I think that depends on your definition of the term manipulated. As we saw in the first example, manipulated can also mean choose. You choose the independent variable and see the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. Also from the University of North Carolina, which you just cited, and a university that has an astrophysics, an astronomy, a seismology, and a theoretical physics department, all things that you claim are pseudoscience, they also have this. Let's look at the second sentence. In some cases, you may not be able to manipulate the independent variable. It may be something that is already there and fixed, something that you would like to evaluate with respect as to how it affects something else the dependent variable. If I choose to make the location of earthquakes my independent variable, and my dependent variable is the reading I get on my seismograph, that's a valid experiment. Physics, John. I mean, Anthony, I don't agree with what, what you have to say, but I let you speak, and then, I, then I'll address what you've said. Yeah, that's that's how a conversation works. On screen, I've got 10 that we can go through here, John. You're wrong. Yeah. You've got to manipulate it. It's on screen right now. No, Anthony. <clears throat> right, let no, me no, let no, me no. speak. Now, and I still I'll, I'll still say that it's, the independent variable is something that varies during the experiment. But the no. need for the for the need experimenter it. to it, to physically the need that you seem to have for the experimenter to be the one who is manipulating the the independent variable that isn't that doesn't necessarily have to happen. You can stand back completely hands off and observe something unfolding without actually right, I'm, manipulating I'm not, it yourself. I'm not up with this lies. I'm going to leave because you are being dogmatic, you're being rude, and you are denying oh. science. Now here's the citation that Anthony used. The independent variable, the variable that is deliberately changed by the experimenter. Okay. Does that mean, for example, that I deliberately change the type of transmission lines for my internet service providers? Or did I simply choose to vary the internet service provider. This can be looked at in a number of different ways. Since you're holding up this particular website as an authority, let's look and see what else is on that website that you would also have to give equal authority to. So just so we can see it is the same website, you can see the independent dependent control variable section that he cited. But let's look over on the left side. Let's look at the very first one, astronomy. Well, let's look at the very first one, observational astronomy. Then we're going to go down and look at Greek evidence for the Earth's shape and spin. So if you accept their definition of the independent variable, obviously you accept this with the same authority. Notice that your source calls these experiments. Does the Earth move? How to make a comet? What's a planetarium model in the path of planets? Can we observe these things? 
They are experiments, according to your source. Hey, Anthony, apparently your source thinks the Earth is a sphere and rotates. Right there it is. Why don't you have a look at it? Well, Anthony, I could continue to do this half the night and do your other seven citations, but you know I'm going to find the same thing, right? We all know that. Now, a couple of things that I need to just bring to your attention. Every one of these organizations that you cite understands the Earth is spherical and rotates. Every single one of them. Every single one of them says that the independent variable is the one that changes, and the dependent variable is what you measure that the effects of that change upon. The important thing to each and every one of your citations is the fact the independent variable changes independently of all of the other variables. There is no requirement that a person individually change that variable. If I'm an investigator, my assistant can change the variable, and it's still an independent variable. I can choose a subset of people like internet service providers, men versus women, young versus old. And those are my independent variables, and then I measure the effect of a drug uh, on their blood pressure, I measure their test scores, I measure the internet speed. That's my dependent variable. I can determine that time will be my independent variable by determining how long I choose to run the experiment. My choice. I manipulate the amount of time that the process has to occur. So, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Take just a moment, hit that little like and subscribe button down there. Uh, I've got a new website up and running and I also have a Patreon in case you wish to donate to the channel. It's not a pay or play, but if you want to, I'd appreciate it.